What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Guys, today we're going to talk about the law of refraction. In the last lesson, we talked about reflection of light. This is going to be the refraction of light, which is really just the bending of light. And we're going to touch upon Snell's law and also total internal reflection. So once again, let's define what refraction is. Refraction is a bending of light when that light enters a medium with a different density. And guys, just remember, a medium is anything that a wave is traveling through. So an example of changing medium densities would be like a light wave traveling through air, and then it enters water. Or a light wave traveling through air, and then it goes through glass. Okay, so when the light is going to change mediums with a different density, that different density is a big one, because we can have two mediums with the same density and no refraction is going to take place, it has to be a change in medium with a different density. And we can calculate this density quantitatively by looking at a medium's index of refraction. Okay, so the index of refraction is going to have a variable symbol of lowercase n, and it is a ratio. And the beautiful thing about ratios is they have no units. Now, what is it a ratio of? It's a ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum compared to the speed of light that's traveling through that medium. So this is a formula that you need to memorize and know if you're taking something like the SAT physics. If you're taking another course where you're allowed to use a reference table, this will most likely be on there. But for the SAT, you need to remember that you can solve for the index of refraction by taking the speed of light divided by the speed that that light wave is going inside that medium. Also, we can find the speed that a wave is going in a medium if we know its index of refraction. And we also know from modern physics that C is as fast as an object can go. So N can never be less than one. So if you do some math and you have an N that's less than one, that would mean that this number down here was greater than C, which cannot happen. So N can never be less than one. And the greater the N is, the denser that material or medium is. And with that more density, we are gonna see that we have a slower speed. And that's pretty obvious to see. As N goes up, V inside that medium is going to go down. They're indirectly related. So this formula right here allows us to see how much speed that we're traveling in a medium. But I said that the law of refraction was a bending of light. So we need a formula to calculate how much bend that light wave is going to have. To do so, we use a relationship called Snell's Law. And here's what Snell's Law says, and this is another formula that needs to be memorized if you are taking the SAT physics exam. This says that if I have a light wave that's traveling in some initial medium at some angle to the normal, which I'll talk about again, then the bending angle is going to be have a relationship of N2. So a couple of things that we need to understand. N1 is always the incident median. We learned last lesson that the incident wave is the one that's approaching the barrier. In this case, the barrier is going to be where those two mediums touch. So if I have a light wave that's traveling like this, approaching a medium, this is going to be N1. All of this medium up here is N1, and then it enters N2. So N2 is the refracted medium. We remember from reflection, we measure all light angles from an imaginary line perpendicular to the boundary called the normal line. This is theta one. So theta one is the incident angle, the same as we did for reflection. Now also, as we spoke in reflection, some of this light wave is going to reflect, which is gonna be equal to theta equals r, because we remember that the incident angle equals the reflected angle. But now some of this light is gonna pass through. And how do we know that light reflects off? Well, say you're standing on a dock over here and this is air and this is water and the sunlight shines down. Well, if you look down at the water, do you see the sun? Yeah, because the sunlight reflects back up to your eye up here. But does a fish down here also see the sunlight? Yes. Now with the normal force, we have to remember, we never bounce off the normal. We only bounce off barriers. So a lot of times students will wanna draw a ray this way reflecting off the normal. Guys, you cannot do that. But we are going to have some sort of reflected or refracted ray. So I'll draw this down here, and we can see that this is going to be N2. This right here is going to be theta 2. I don't call it theta r 
because theta r is reflection, I'm going to call it theta 2. So theta 2 is essentially how much the ray bent. And guys, all of our angles here are measured in degrees. Now, because a test like the SAT does not allow you to use calculators, you're not really going to have to be able to solve for angles. But what you will have to do is be able to identify when is a wave speeding up or slowing down because this bend is determined by how much a wave changes speeds. So we're going to look at does the wave speed up or slow down? And this will tell us if N1 is greater than N2 or if N1 is less than N2. So I'm going to look at two situations where I have N1 and N2, and I'm going to look over here as well. N1, oh, that's a terrible line, Finn. N1, N2. And in both cases, we're going to have a light ray come and strike the barrier right here. This is our incident ray. Tell me measure. I'm going to draw an imaginary normal through this spot where it intersects with the boundary. Now, we will say that this right here is our incident angle. Now I want to draw, and I'm going to be really extreme with this so it's easy to identify. I'm going to make this wave go right down here. This is going to be theta 2. But for this one, I'm going to have it come way out here. This is going to be theta 2 for this situation. Now in this case, we can see that theta 2 is less than theta 1. And in this case, theta 2 is going to be greater than theta 1. This gives us some information. We say that this thing is going to bend towards the normal. So that's another way for me to say that theta 2 decreased. It bent towards the normal. Where we say that this way, it bent away from the normal. So that's another way we can say that theta 2 increased. It bent away from the normal. Now, why that's significant, if I bend towards the normal, if theta 2 is less than theta 1, that means that the wave has slowed down, where in this case, the wave has sped up. And then using that relationship that we just saw of n equals c over v, if v slows down, that means n went up. So therefore, n2 is greater than n1. And in this case, if my v went up, that means that my n went down. So in this case, n2 is going to be less than n1. So without doing any math whatsoever, we know a lot of things. We know that because it bent towards the normal, the wave slowed down, therefore n2 must be greater than n1. And we know that if theta2 gets bigger, n2 is going to be less than n1 and the wave has sped up. Now there's a few things we have to note. If we remember... We know that V equals frequency times wavelength. In refraction, frequency does not change, right? Frequency tells us color. Imagine if you were standing on like the diving board of a pool and your friend was at the bottom. And you shine a blue light into the pool and they saw a red light at the bottom. Like That doesn't happen. They would see a blue light. So it, as V changes, frequency remains the same. Wavelength of the wave changes. All right, so that's how V can change and frequency remains constant. This one will also change as well. And it's also worth noting that the incident angle, right, must be greater than zero for refraction to happen, right? Because if I look at Snell's law, which is N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2, well, what is the sine of zero degrees? If I had, if I had a wave that was incident right here, and that was right on the normal, well, therefore, theta would be equal to zero degrees. So N1 times sine of zero degrees was equal to zero. So there'd be no refraction in this case. So it's also worth noting that for refraction to take place, this theta must be greater than zero. Now let's talk about something called total internal reflection. All right, so here's what happens with internal reflection reflection, total internal reflection. So we just saw that as the light approaches a barrier where N2 is going to be less than N1, the wave is going to speed up and bend away from the normal. Well, it gets to a point, if the normal line is here, it gets to a point where I can only bend 
so far away from the normal, right? This theta two has a limit. It has a limit to the point where if I have a wave coming in at such an, an angle theta one, that I will have the refraction angle be at 90 degrees from the normal. So there is a limit to what theta one can be for refraction to occur. Once I reach this threshold of this incident angle, what's gonna happen is the wave is now going to stay inside N1, and this is going to be what we call total internal reflection. Even though light should be able to pass into N2, it doesn't because of this theta one. So theta one that causes a refraction angle two of 90 degrees is called the critical angle for total internal reflection. All right, guys, and sometimes you might see this called theta sub C, like a critical angle. Sometimes they denote it like that, especially on the SAT, you might see that because sometimes you have to solve for it, and we solve for this angle by using Snell's law once again. So N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two. So if I want to know what this critical angle is N1, I set theta 2 to 90 degrees. Well, what is the sine of 90 degrees? That is an angle which you should know, and that is 1. So we see that the critical angle is equal to the inverse sine of N2 minus over N1. All right, now what just happened was I just plugged in 1 for this. So I had really just N2 on this side. I divided over N1, which made this, and then I divided both sides by sine. So this is how we find the critical angle when we know the index of refraction for two different mediums. So let me do a quick example here and I'll show you how we work through this. And something that you might see on tests like the SAT physics, even though a calculator is not allowed. So I'm gonna shine a light. I'm gonna come up from the bottom because Incident rays can come from the top or the bottom. So I'm going to have an incident ray. So remember, this is called N1. N1 is not always on top. N1 could be on the bottom. N1 is where the incident ray is. It enters N2, and I'm gonna say it comes from a dense medium into a less dense medium. So N1 is going to be greater than N2. And therefore, N2 is less than N1, so the wave is gonna speed up and bend away, okay? Those are things that you should be able to identify when I say more dense to less dense. As I vary the incident angle, which is right here, I find that there is a critical angle that is equal to 53 degrees. I tell you that this less dense material is actually air, and air has an index of refraction of one. I want to use this information to say what is the index of refraction of the first medium. So here is how I'd work this out. I have N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And remember that the critical angle, which is really the same as the incident angle, is equal to 90 degrees at N2. Now, using this information that we're given, we can solve for what we want to know N1 here. So N1 times the sine of the critical angle is going to be equal to N2, which was given, sine of theta 2, which was also given. So let's plug in our givens now. We have N1 sine of 53 degrees equals N2, which was given as air 1, sine of 90 degrees, because that's where the critical angle happens, which is also 1. So I have N1. Now, the sine of 53, if we remember a 3, 4, 5 triangle, guys, 53 degrees is the largest angle of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I can use opposite over adjacent. The sine of 53 is equal to 4 over 5. That equals 1. So we see now N1 is equal to 5 over 4, which we do not need a calculator, 1.25. And we remember that this is a ratio... It does not have a unit, so that would be the denser medium as it enters air. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Have yourself a great day.